So a couple months ago I bought this Matrox G100 card. It's an entry level graphics card released back in 1998. And although its 3D capabilities are not really anything to write home about, like most Matrox cards it has excellent 2D image quality, potentially a great match to use with something like a 3DFX Voodoo 2. But sadly, like so many things I've bought recently, it's broken. I get no VGA output from it at all, and I tried it on two different systems. But because I got it really cheap and it was as is from eBay, I just sort of assumed it was toast and I threw it in my ever-growing pile of parts needing repair. You win some, you lose some, I guess. But more recently I got this other card here, a slightly better Matrox card. This one's the Millennium G200 released in 1998 as well. The two cards are actually pretty similar, but the G200 is a bit faster, has double the memory at 8 megs versus 4, and it can be further expanded as well here. The uh, eBay seller said it was pulled from a working system years ago, but it had been in storage for quite a while. I had no reason to think it was bad, but sure enough I gave it a try and the exact same symptoms, no VGA output at all. I did some digging online and to my surprise there were many reports of G100 and G200 cards just spontaneously dying like this. I've owned several Matrox cards over the years, including a G200, and generally speaking, I never really considered Matrox cards to be unreliable, but certainly that isn't what I was seeing online, that's for sure. The behavior was also kind of strange, you know, usually when a card is totally dead because its chipset is toast or something like that, the PC just won't post. It'll usually give a beep code because it can't find a video card or something like that. But in my case, both of these cards allow the system to post just fine, and it seems like it gets all the way into Windows. I just can't see anything because the card's not working. And in fact, this looked incredibly similar to something I encountered with some 3DFX Voodoo 3 cards a few months ago. I bought three defective cards to repair, and actually two of them had VBIOS issues and just needed a reflash to recover. Those cards did the exact same thing as these two Matrox cards, and I'll put a link in the description to that video if you'd like to check it out. Could it be as simple as that for these two as well? So one way to verify that the card still has some life in it is to boot into Windows with a second video card installed. I'm just using my trusty old S3 Verge PCI card here. The system booted up just fine, and once in Windows 2000 I can see the Matrox G200 show up as a display adapter and device manager. Really from Windows perspective, it looks like a healthy card. The driver was loaded, and I can see that system resources were assigned here as well. Another neat trick is the old monitor switcheroo. So Windows 2000 has pretty robust multi-monitor support, and you can drive multiple monitors with multiple video cards as well. I'm going to extend my desktop to the G200 here, and then I'm going to change it to be the primary display as well. If this works, there should be a VGA signal coming out of the G200 now. So with the system still running, I'm just going to move the VGA cable from the Verge to the G200, and sure enough, we have display output. Nice clean analog signal from the card, and from what I can see, it's working just fine. So this really confirms to me that this card's a perfect candidate for a BIOS reflash. And when I started doing some digging on the process, I came across a very interesting IBM KB article from all the way back in 2005. At some point, Matrox included a software utility called BIOS Guard that runs in the background and actually reflashes the card's BIOS periodically. <laughs> Sounds like a great idea, but considering most manufacturers warned against BIOS flashing unnecessarily due to the inherent risks if something goes wrong. This is, you know, really out of character. And I think it just goes to show that Matrox knew that these cards had some problems with BIOS degradation over time for quite a while. I came across a great Vogons thread, as I often do in matters like this, that mentioned a Matrox recovery utility, and I'll include a link to that thread in the description. But basically it's a floppy disk image containing a recovery utility and the BIOS files for a number of different Matrox cards. I went ahead and wrote it to my GoTech floppy emulator and decided to give it a go. The floppy image uses FreeDOS and in theory should be able to reflash a supported Matrox card even if a second card isn't installed in the system. The autoexec.bat file will automatically run the repair utility and reboot the system when it's finished. But in my case I'd like to see what's going on so I hit F5 to bypass it. As you can see the floppy image contains 32 kilobyte BIOS files for the G100, G200, and G400. It also has different variants for PCI and AGP based cards. I tried to run the recovery utility with the slash question mark just to get some command syntax, but it didn't respond to that and just decided to run anyway. The flashing process was very painless and the utility automatically identifies the card and the correct bin file to use as well. After a minute or so, the process was complete and I was ready to see if the card was saved. 
And sure enough, it's working perfectly now. It really was just the vBIOS needing to be reprogrammed. So that's really great. So next, let's see if the G100 can also be saved in the same way. The card ran just fine in Windows when I booted up with the S3 Verge, but unfortunately I ran into some problems with the recovery floppy. I get a failure message about a bad PCB number, and I couldn't find any way to force flash using the recovery utility. After doing some more digging online, I found an awesome old site that was archived by the Wayback Machine called The Matrox Files. I'll put a link to it in the description below. But there's a very detailed page there about BIOS recovery, and it led me to some slightly newer flashing tools from 2001. The newer floppy image didn't seem to have a BIOS file for the G100, so I just copied the one over from the recovery disk. I just pointed the prog BIOS flashing utility at the bin file, and it was happy to flash the card. I had to laugh at the end because it said it flashed it three times. Gotta make sure those bits are set nice and firmly on these cards, that's for sure. And just like the G200, the G100 is working perfectly after being reprogrammed. I must say, it's really awesome to have these cards out of the broken pile and to be able to use them again for some upcoming projects. So that was quite a bit shorter than my usual videos, but after seeing this issue on some 3DFX cards and now with this pair of Matrox cards, I did think it was important to get the message out. There's probably quite a few cards out there that are presumed dead that really just need a simple BIOS flash to get them up and running again. So before you toss one of your favorite old cards into the e-waste bin, it may not hurt to give it another look. I'm not entirely sure what makes the G100 and G200 more susceptible to this than other cards, but after 25 years, it isn't too surprising that some bit rot could occur. Flash-based EE proms like this use electrical charge to store data, and over long periods of time, enough leakage can occur to flip a bit or two, and that's really all it takes to brick the card. Thankfully, this doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the EE prom though, and a simple reprogramming could be good for another couple of decades. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see some more retro content like this. Also, be sure to check the description below for links and other useful information, how to find me on Twitter, and for a link to my blog. Thanks again for watching.